I was filming in Canada and we just finished a series on the Native Americans, you know, what we call the Indians, you know, the old cowboy and Indian films. Well, I'd gone out to film the Indians, six different tribes, four in America, two up in, in Canada. And I'll be honest with you, he, we'd f just finished Chris Packham. He phoned me up and I thought, oh, what the hell does he want? So I answered, hello. And he said, hello, blah, blah, blah. How would you like to come on to Alter Watch? And I said, oh, right, okay, to do what? And he goes, well, you know, I, I don't know, but we're looking for new people to come on. And um, I'd, I'd worked with him, I'd done a couple of things with him before. And he said, how would you like to come on? So I said, okay, let, let's give it a go. So that was how I got on. I, he phoned me up and asked me, and that was eight years ago now. So, and, and that's been good fun. We, we filmed some, some cool things on that. Whales off Ireland and all kinds of stuff. Killer whales off Shetland. They're cool, I like killer whales. Would so, you think for extreme watch thing you've done or Oh, that's a hard one to answer. That is a hard one, does it? Probably, because I was so excited about it, when the first orca, or first killer whale I ever saw, was on Spring Watch. And we filmed all of that. You know, I mm -hmm. fell over. There's one bit where we were running along, and I fell over and got back up again and ran again. Um, and that was so exciting. And yeah. it, was, it's, it wasn't put on, you know. And if I saw another one now, I'd still be excited. I saw one. I, I lead tours and stuff now. Just come back from Patagonia. Mm -hmm. But in July, I was up in Shetland, you know. And the group, I took the group right down by the water. Because there was a group of orcas in the bay. And they came right un underneath us. Right underneath us, you know. And the male is about nine, nine meters long. Yeah. You know, it's a big, big male. Yeah. And his dorsal fin... Is six foot tall. Wow. It's as tall. I'm six foot one. It's yeah. as tall as I am, and that's just the dorsal fin, and they look so powerful. The tail just does this Quite in the water. Probably, Do you know what? My dream is to get in the water with them, because they're so intelligent. There's footage on YouTube if you look it up mm -hmm. of a lady who swims in Lerwick. Lerwick is the capital of those islands, Shetland. She swims in the bay every day, and there's footage of her going out for a swim. And orcas going underneath her. Wow. They don't even look at her. They've got no interest. They, they hunt seals and fish, but they didn't look at her. Mm. So I'd love to get in the water with her. Well, that's a funny one, that is, because um, I, first of all, I was working for the RSPB. I worked for the RSPB for 15 years. I had the best job in the world. I was what they call a species officer for whales. And that involved three main things, really. First of all, um, monitoring birds. In other words, counting them. You know, say, at the time, the red kite was really, really bad. Right. Not like now, you, you see red kites. I drove down, I saw red kites everywhere. But when, when I was your age, it was really rare. In the whole of Britain, there were maybe 30 to 40 pairs, all of them in mid Wales. So part of my job was to organise a team of people to count the pairs, find out where they were, were they doing well, were they rearing enough chicks and all this kind of stuff. Second part of it was giving advice to big landowners. Let's say now, for example, there's a very rare crow called a chuff. Chuff is like a black crow with a bright red beak, and it's really rare. Two-thirds of the whole population of the UK is found in Wales. And they, they nest mainly around the coast, places like the Gower, Pembrokeshire, up in North Wales, Anglesey. And most of that land is owned by the National Trust. So my job was to go out and talk to them, the wardens, and say, listen, if you manage the land like this, if you put cattle on the land to graze those bits, that would be really good for chuff. See if we could get the chuff numbers going up. So that was another part of the work. And the final part of my job was investigations, to investigate crimes against wild birds. So people who were shooting rare birds, people who were putting out poison to kill birds, people who were stealing eggs. It was my job to investigate all of that. So it's a combination of those two things, really. Okay, hey, thanks. All right, Alanis, you were next, weren't you? What? What are your favourite animals? Oh, that's, that's always a hard question, that is. Um, my favourite mammal is a wolf. Is a wolf. It used to be tiger, because I haven't seen tiger for a long time. I've seen that, and they're amazing. But it's a wolf. I remember going to Alaska, and we were going on a raft down a river. We'd seen a beaver. And all of a sudden, this wolf came out to the woods, down by the water. It was only about 100 metres away drank the water, looked up at us, looked right in, in the eyes, and then turned and loped off, just slow, but in no time at all, it, it was right up the top of the hill, you know, because these long legs was eating up the ground. So it's, and I would, we used to have wolves in Wales up till about 600 years ago, 
they were they in Scotland. They were in Scotland till the 1740s. So what's that? Less than 300 years ago. And I would love to see Rose back. You imagine how much more exciting it would be to go for a walk, knowing there were wolves around you. Wouldn't that be exciting? Wolves. <laughs> do you know what? In, in the, there are no records of wolves attacking people in North America. None. None. No records at all. So all this business of Little Red Riding Hood and all the wolves will attack you, it's rubbish. Honestly, it genuinely is rubbish. Yes, they'll attack sheep and what have you, but there are no records of wolves attacking humans, none at all. What makes me so passionate about the environment? Well, it's like, um, it's like asking anybody, you know, um, to talk about what they're really interested in. You ask a footballer to talk about football and they get really passionate, don't they? You ask a rugby player to talk about rugby and they go, oh, you know, he's playing against France and like passing the ball. And it's, it's, it's what I love doing. It, I remember going up a tree and finding a wood pigeon's nest. And a wood pigeon makes a really messy nest, like twigs and then twigs. And that's it. There's no cup or nothing like that. It's just twigs. And they lay two eggs on there. And I went up and I found this nest with two eggs. And I remember thinking, oh, poor old bird, it's only got two eggs. So I went back to the house, got six hen's eggs off, off my mum, and put them all around the pigeon eggs, <laughs> and then went down and back again. And then my mum found out, and she was horrified, and she made me go back and get all six hen's eggs back and put them back in the pantry and leave the pigeon. And that was when I was about, probably I was about three years old. Just keep at it, because we need people like you. We're like the skip of the road. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
So we were able to get the materials for necessary funding by bag packing down Tesco's, it and DT changing. Oh, we do, yeah. Right, Sophia, sorry. What projects are you working at the moment? Uh, projects I'm working on at the moment, um, I, as I say, I've got these tours that I do, so there's one coming up in two weeks' time when I uh, lead the group up to Isla, which is an island off the west coast of Scotland, where in winter you've got stuff like hen harriers, which is a big bird of prey, merlin, which is another little bird of prey, you've got geese, thousands of geese come from Iceland and Greenland and Canada to overwinter there and feed there for the winter, so that will be good. I'm finishing off a series, I'm filming tomorrow actually, and we're filming till early January, a series on urban wildlife, it's called Street Life. So looking at uh, wildlife right in the middle of towns and uh, cities and stuff, we filmed in Llanelli, we filmed in Swansea, Newport, Cardiff, Wrexham, Colwyn Bay, Bangor we filmed, so we're looking at just the urban areas. And then the next thing will be Winter Watch. Winter Watch will be the end of January, and I'm also working on a book at the moment. I'm about uh, two-thirds of the way through. I wrote a book about three years ago, um, the 40, My 40 Favourite Wildlife Sites in Wales. And this is my 40 favourite wildlife sites in the whole of the UK. So from the very north of Scotland all the way down to the southwest of England. I wasn't sure if it was two years or three years ago. So that takes you through all, the, all my favourite reserves uh, in, in Wales, you know, from the north to the south, South Stack on Anglesey, Tregaram Bog is there, Skomer and Skokoma there, Mega Marsh, Dinevor Park, Clandilo, has anyone been there? Yeah. That's a cool place. Now, did you see the deer up there? Do you see the deer? Because there's a, there's a herd of deer, fallow deer up there, there's loads of other things, there's white cattle and all kinds of stuff up there. So, yeah, so that's that one. So it's like a follow-up to that one.